Hello viewers, Begani Gaming here, welcome back to another video of Woods Full Racing. It's Groove 4 around Watkins Glen and we're currently doing our first qualifying run. Uh, there's a lot of strategy talks here for this round, uh, mainly in the tyre strategy department. Uh, a lot of strategies were being thrown at the walls and we're just trying to see what sticks. So our first qualifying run, we got a 153.251. It was temporarily good enough for a P1. Uh, we're going to start our second lap here for our qualifying. So coming down, braking just after the 200 board, down into third, and then a quick short shift up into fourth, trying to run the car out wide as possible, but not too wide to get a penalty. Uh, coming through the S's here, flat out throughout the whole way, up into fifth, into sixth, trying to keep a tight line. Uh, the tighter the line, the less travel, the less distance you have traveled uh, throughout the track, so that really does help with all that time. Almost hitting 240 kilometers here in the group four, which is absolutely insane. We're up by 0.2 on the on the best lap, which is a 153 flat set by Lucky in the BMW, I believe. So coming here for the long right hander down into four, down into fifth, uh, up into sixth on the exit, down into fourth, into third to get a bit of rotation, a short shift up into fourth, just to dull the power and get your get on the power nice and early. Up into fifth, getting a nice short shift. The McLaren loves a good short shift around here. It keeps it within the power range. Down into third for the uphill right. Getting on the power just as you see the grass fields in your in your view. Into fourth, passing the, the penalty burn line. And we've lost some time, but we're still up on our personal here. Passing Palmer as we're still pushing through. Breaking just after the 200 board. Down into third. Sometimes second to get a bit of rotation. Again, running out wide. Could have, done, could have gone on power a little bit sooner there. And it may have, little, may have cost us there. Down into fifth, into third, getting on the power, a late apex that one, into up into fourth, crossing the line with a 2.2 up on our personal so far. So we're very much on the edge of getting a nice fast up here. Almost fed in the throttle there through the second last corner, down to fourth, quick break, earn the power nice and early, up into fifth, tried to get behind the super there to get a bit of a tow. We only better our time by a near 153 flat, so only good enough for P2. We ended up dropping down into P4 as a few other drivers such as ZD and Trollic ended up bettering our time. So, on to race one year, and we were supposed to be running a medium tyre race. Uh, but unfortunately, because we were caught up making sure the lobby settings were correct and also making sure that we were recording our own gameplay, I ended up picking the softs. So, with all this practice we were doing throughout the week, we came to the conclusion that both the soft and the medium tyres would make you finish around the same total race time but with the softer tires you end up getting a really early strong push but your tires would end up dying towards the end of the race where the mediums they would also die but they would die at a later stage in the race so there was a bit of a crossover around lap seven where the pace of the mediums would end up being better than the pace of the softs um, so unfortunately when we realized that we were on the softs we knew we had to push as hard as possible we knew other drivers around us were running on the medium tire the only one who wasn't on the medium tire, was on a soft tire, soft tire like us, was Lucky, who was in the Supra. So he was being kept at bay at the moment by MCD using the Sylvia behind us. But we had ZD and Euthrolic. Now also, with the practice that came around throughout this race, we knew that there were certain cars that would just do better than the McLaren. That being the Alfa Romeo, the Renault, and as well as the, up ahead of us, the Acura NSX. So we weren't expecting a podium from this from these rounds of races. We were honestly uh, content with finishing up in the top five and trying to do a bit of a damage control. So to say that we were already qualifying top four and then moving up into the top three was a very good start, but we still had to get past two other drivers. So the quicker we got ahead of those two drivers, the better it was for our tires because we wouldn't be any more in the dirty air which would mean that we had to push our car harder in the corners and put more energy in the tyres to put it on the track where we want, where we want the car to be. Uh, with being in the clean air, there's more downforce on the front end of the car. So there's, there's more aer aerodynamic grip than mechanical grip required when in clean air. So we see Zidi here looking to make a move on the inside of Euthrolic and they go side by side, which is really good for us because then that gives us a really good run. So we set ourselves up here beautifully, right behind Euthrolic, he's also on our team and he knew he saw the bigger picture, he knew that we were on the fast tyre and he knew that we had to clear both him and Zidi immediately. 
So I'm here giving you throw like a bit of a bump draft. I did at one stage here think of making a move, but I thought that it would be better to hold off for one more lap. Uh, I did know that Euthrolik is a, is a person who who will let you through quite easily if you're on his team. Um, but I didn't want to put him in a position where he started to panic and then put him off track. So I gave him one 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 more lap uh, where I would make a charge later on. So I just wanted to make sure I clear as many cars as possible as quickly as possible to keep my tyres alive for as long as possible. Because later in the race, those mediums are going to come back and, and really hunt us down. So we're doing really good here. We're P2, we've got a teammate in front of us, he's also P1, who's done a, a really surprising result. The Porsche wasn't one of those cars that we were expecting to do really well. Um, so for him to qualify first and still hold his position is absolutely outstanding. And as well to have a McLaren behind him, um, who at the time was on the wrong strategy, um, was also very good. So we're, some, we're, we're about 0.25 of a second out from, from dropping ZD out of the slipstream. Now we see that Lucky is also, as we said before, on the soft tyre. So he's going to be pushing ZD for as long as possible before his tyres burn out. And the, the longer them two battle, the better it is for me. So we can drive away, have our own race, and try and leave ZD and Lucky in the dust and have them do their own battles. So ZD ran wide coming out of the last corner, bumped the inside wall. That gave Lucky a bit more of an opportunity to go up on the inside of the first corner. And he does so beautifully. Now, we also set ourselves up here for a, for a very good run here on the back straight against Vithrolic. So we gave him, we, we, I think I flashed him here to give him the signal that I was going to make a pass. Give him a bump drop just to get him up the hill a little bit quicker. And then we're going to try and make a move on the outside here. But I don't think Vithrolic kind of saw me. So we, it was a very butt clenching moment there between us. Um, almost getting tangled up on each other. Thankfully, Vithrolic, as I said before, He'll let you off if he, if he sees the bigger picture for the team. So he let me through there. Kudos to him. Now his role is to act as my rear gunner. And he's done a beautiful job of that. He held up Lucky and Zidi for as long as possible. And not to a point where it was considered illegal in some areas. So we now have inherited first. We're now in clean air. So this is ideally the best scenario that we could that we can be in here. Because now we can go at our own race. We can control our own our own our own pace around here and we went to we want to make sure that we keep his tires alive for as long as possible so the strategy was very simple either you're on the mediums or you're on the softs one is a very strong tire out the gate but it does not last after lap six maybe seven depending on the car that you have the medium tire not as fast out the gate but it's more of a slow burn tire that will come back to you towards the end of the race, say around lap 7, lap 8, where the soft tyre runners really do get punished. So you can see here, we're already in clean air, we're already 0.5 up here on our, on, our, on our own fastest lap so far. So it's amazing to see that Euthrolic is still holding up uh, the, the guys behind us, he's keeping them busy. And whilst, whilst he's doing that, we just have to keep driving away. And that's really all that happened to be honest, we ended up driving our own race and it was a pretty boring race after this. So he ended up coming to the last few corners. You can see there how dead our tyres are towards the end of that race. Our front left is completely dead. And it was dead by, I think, lap 7. Uh, the back left, also on its way out. The front right wasn't too far behind that one. There's some victory victory wiggles here on the straight. And we ended up finishing P1. So an absolutely outstanding result. Yathrolik, unfortunately, did drop some positions towards the end. Uh, he's, he just couldn't keep the pace of Zidi and Lucky. So overall, race one, an outstanding result and our first win for the season. On to race two now, and the grid is set based off your qualifying results, but in reverse. So because I qualified fourth on the grid uh, during qualifying, I now start fourth last on the grid. So I'm on the second back row here. And we get off to a pretty decent start here. We still hold our position. Uh, ZD missing his braking marker and goes well up on the inside on the infield here and almost wipes out four drivers. So very lucky uh, to escape that incident. Unfortunately, uh, the one person who did get screwed over by that was our teammate with Frolic. Um, who probably could have had a, a slightly better result if that happened and happened. But uh, fortunately for us, like we said before, we did escape uh, almost unharmed. So we make a quick move here up on to Baggins, who is also in the BMW, 
and with this race strategy we knew that there were two strategies at hand it was just a matter of which one we wanted to pick so a little bit later on in the race i think this is about probably 20 seconds later not even uh palmer and packer get a little bit tangled up in the third last corner there and that bunches the pack up again beautifully for us so like i said before there were a few strategies getting thrown at the wall and drivers were just wanting to see what would stick. Uh, we decided to go for a one stop, having that be start on the mediums and then move to a soft tyre. The reason why we started on the medium tyre is because we were working through the pack. Uh, using, the using the soft tyres would be great to quickly move through that pack, but there's always the risk of being held up by other drivers who just don't want to give you their position. And fair enough, you know, that's, that's, that's how racing works. But with a soft tyre, that does make that does mean that they do burn through quicker. And just like the last race, they aren't going to last as long compared to the mediums. So we started to play it safe and stick with the medium tyres for the start of the race and just try and hold our own with the pack in front of us. So we had Lucky try and stick a nose up. Uh, fortunately for us, the pace of the McLaren is just good enough to hold him off. He, does have, he has another look here and we shut the door on him, we don't want him trying to make a move on the inside of there, it's just way too risky in our eyes. So, still holding on to 8th position, we knew back, we knew Lucky had pace. Uh, we knew it was a matter, only a matter of time before he would pass us, we just wanted to hold it off for as long as possible. So then again, look, showing the inside nose there, uh, and just blocking that door. We, not, we, we do not want him to get up on the inside there at all. And we're still setting uh, some pretty solid sector times. Uh, a 1 minute 11 for that sector is still really good for, for a medium tyre run. Uh, and we see here MCDC uh, getting a little bit caught up on the inside curve that does unsettle his car. That does a grant on the position up into 7th. We did have a cheeky little look there on the inside of Palmer. Um, but then thankfully the brakes did hold up on the McLaren. And uh, we thought better of it. Uh, it was a bit too much of a lunge in our eyes so we've moved up a position here on this lap we've still got Palmer in front of us we've still got luck we still got lucky behind us uh pushing us through trying to get that position back as soon as, as quickly as possible but like, like we said before it was only a matter of time before lucky got around us and he does it with a beautiful move around the outside here using the camber of the track to his advantage but we weren't too fast by this as you can see ahead Palmer getting a two and a half second penalty uh, he picked up that penalty by taking the wrong line through the bus stop here. So we have a little bit of a, just a, a sniff on the inside of Lucky there. Uh, just to get him a little bit hesitated. But he holds his line beautifully and we end up still holding on to a position. So we did lose a position but we also gained a position. So we're still in P70 with, on lap 3 of 19. And you're going to see very soon how much pace Lucky had here. And it, almost, and it actually worked into our favour here. So we're coming through to the last point. He gets an absolute beautiful run compared to Nugget and Packer. And we see Packer pull out to try and go for a move on Nugget. But then out of nowhere, so does Lucky. So they're going three wide into turn one. And we see this and we're like, okay, we'll just take a normal line, a late apex, and try and get as much speed on all three of them as possible. Because we knew that all three of them had now compromised their exit speed. So, timed it beautifully. We're now right up in the business of all three of the drivers. We're already making moves on Nugget here. We're now side by side with him down the back straight. We're, we're really fighting here for the slipstream. And we have Packer who's also pulled out with Lucky alongside him. We're too wide back to back through the bus stop. Uh, Packer unfortunately loses it uh, under, his own, under his own will. Rejoins the track in a very dodgy way. Uh, unfortunately that pushes Nugget off onto the off into the guide rails with no redress so unfortunately for Nugget uh, he did come off second best sorry realistically fourth best out of all out of all four of us um, but again awesome for us another position that we have gained through very little tire wear um, and we're doing really well here P6 with lap 4 on to lap 8 now we're, like, we're right up behind Packer here and Packer goes into the pits and we move up a position so we're like I said just right behind Lucky here and also Madriski up into P3 
We're up in P5 now. We're on lap 9. We're, we're in a really good position here. Uh, Lucky again, showing his pace with the grid. Getting a nice move on mid. Uh, he's setting himself up beautifully. But it's also, we have done a very good job to set ourselves up here beautifully. So we're going to go for an absolute scent on both Lucky and mid here. Both of them are in a drag race. And then we invite ourselves into the party. Split the needle between both of them, Lucky and Bedriski, pushing ourselves up into P3. Two positions in in on one part of the track. Absolutely outstanding move. Uh, the McLaren's pace showing its strength and being able to clear Lucky and Bedriski with, again, very little tire wear, which his whole round was about. His whole round was about tire wear and trying to keep the tires alive for as long as possible. On to lap 10 now. We moved up into P1 through the drivers ahead. Uh, I believe they were Baker and Broken Spoke uh, with a Renault on the Lamborghini pitting a lap earlier. So we've come to the pits here. We're done with our meeting guys. We want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. So onto the softs, some fuel to make to the finish line. And we're going to come out of the pits here just behind Lucky and Packer. Um, unfortunately, we think if we did pit a lap earlier, we may have actually cleared them out of the pits um, purely because that one lap we lost so much time because our tyres were completely dead so lap 17 here a fair way into the race now uh, me and Lucky were slowly closing the gap to the TDR boys up ahead uh, ba Lucky was really hassling Baker uh, throughout the entirety of the last half of the race uh, for those last seven or so laps, Lucky was really giving uh, Baker a nice, a, a good battle. Uh, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to stick on the first corner there, so we ended up getting past him. On to the second last lap here, the TDR boys are top four positions, purely on pace. They're going to try and go for a move here on Packer. So we go wide, uh, unlike as we've seen before, going wide there really does kill your speed. So we try and set ourselves up again for another move, try and go up on the inside there. There's no door there. We can't get, can't get through there. So try out, try our luck again. Go up on the inside of Broken Spoke, and we do so beautifully. Up into P2, and we knew the Lamborghini had very bad tire wear. Uh, it being an all-wheel drive car, it was going to be burning out through its tires relatively quickly. So we had to push for this last lap and a half just to see if we could catch up to Baker. But unfortunately, he did a really good job to hold his own there, and then the best we could settle for was a P2. So, realistically, in a round where we weren't expecting a podium, we ended up getting a win and a second place. So, even though we didn't get two wins, it, it was an amazing round for us. Uh, completely unexpected results. One win with un due to an unexpected strategy. So we've done really well here. And as well as we throw, you also did really well. Uh, an awesome recovery drive on his end to, uh, to finish in P8. So onto the leaderboards now, and unfortunately we did end up picking a penalty in the round two, uh, the previous video that was uploaded. Uh, that really did hurt us and put us back from P1 to P4. Uh, we did also have the Nürburgring race, which we did rather well in. We ended up finishing P4, which is a very good uh, outcome for a race that was we weren't really well prepared for. Uh, so we ended up holding on to P4 until this round, where we had a really strong showing, almost getting maximum points here. Uh, only one 10 points shy of, of maximum damage. Uh, that's ended up promoting us up into P3. Uh, so we've done really well there. And unfortunately, that penalty has hurt us as it would have tied us now with P1 if we hadn't picked up that penalty. Onto the team championships now. And we have unfortunately dropped from P1 down to P2. But we're only trailing them by two points. So there's still a lot to play for here with many rounds to go within the season. Next round is Group 3's at Yamigawa. And a track that really does punish you if you don't look after your tyres. So, two rounds back to back where tyre conservation is key. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.